Yeah, of course you can. What do I think of them? I, I love people. I love all people. Yes. That's what I think of them, yeah. If there was a gay man here today, I'd say I love you and I want Jesus Christ to come and save you. Yeah? Uh, my, I've got my gay friends on the phone. Oh, have you? Okay, right. What, to listen to, to what I'm talking about, yeah? Oh, well, that's wonderful. Anyway, back to the thing. You, are you a sinner, though? Can I ask you what's I'm your name? Sinner. Yeah, are you a sinner? Well, it depends what you, you um, what, what's in, what are the sins. Okay, so the Ten Commandments, have you ever told lies before? Probably, yeah. Probably? Is that a lie itself? I, I, I didn't ask everyone. What's your name? Sorry, I'm Amy. I didn't ask everyone. I asked you, Amy. Have you yeah, told lies? Yeah. Have you ever used God's name as a swear word? OMG. Yeah. So, okay. Have you ever stolen anything before? Yes. Yeah. And have you ever, Jesus said, if you've ever looked at anyone of the opposite sex or any sex, if you like, and you've lusted after them, you've committed adultery in their heart. Have you done that before? Like fancied someone. Yeah, but more than that, undress them with the, your, your eyes. That, yeah, that kind of thing. L lusted after them. The Bible lusted after them. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've done it. I've done. I've done all those things, Amy. Yeah, I've lied. I've blasphemed. I've done. Well, I, well, the coffee can wait. But I'm telling you today, we've broken God's laws. I've done it. But Jesus Christ, the good news is, though we've broken God's laws. We can be forgiven and wash white and then snow. And that's all you have to do is all you have to do is put the Ten Commandments up to a man or a woman and they'll run a million miles away. You think we're going to go heaven? No, you don't know. Well, you don't know, do you? So here's the question. Uh, what's your name, sorry? Blake. Blake. I, I, don't, I, I don't want to scare you in any way, Blake. And I hope you, you're a young man and I hope you live until you're 90, 100 or whatever, Blake. But Blake, imagine you stand before God this very day and you stand before him and you've died very sadly and he says, why should I let you into my heaven? What would your answer be, Blake? Well, because it's me. I've been a good boy, you know what I mean? You say, because it's I've me? I've done my sins, I've done my time. Yeah? I'm a good boy. I'm You've been a good boy. Well, yeah, yeah. do you know that good works don't save you? Do you know the Bible says it's only by grace we've been saved, yeah. not of works, lest anyone can boast? Because imagine if we all went to heaven and said, you know, I've given to charity, I've done this, I've done that. Do you know what sin we would have committed then? The sin of pride. We'd be proud, wouldn't we? Yeah. The Bible says the only way to get to heaven is through the Son, Jesus Christ. You see, on a cross, Jesus Christ took all the Blake's wrong, all the Joe's wrong, all the Paul's wrong, all of our sin was laid on him and he was punished. Yeah. It's a bit like this. You stand before a judge, you've committed a crime. Oh, have you? Okay, yeah. right, okay. Yeah, but, yeah, but was there a fine to pay? Yeah, uh, 20 pounds. 26 pounds. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not a bad fine. What if it was 26,000 pounds? Could you pay that fine? You couldn't pay it, could you? And I couldn't either, okay? But what happens if someone comes into the court case and says, I'll pay that fine for you, £26,000. You can walk out of the court case free. That's what the cross is all about. Well, no, because if someone says, I pay the full £26,000, that's it. You can walk out free. That's what Jesus did for you, Blake. On the cross, Jesus Christ paid for all of your sins, past, present and future, with his very blood. He shed his blood so you can be forgiven. Isn't that good news? But you know, there is a, a catch, if that makes sense. And the catch is this. It's a bit like a gift. If I give you a gift, Blake, and I say, Get, Blake, here you go, here's a gift for you. You have a choice. You can either open the gift and receive it, or you can say, Joe, I'm okay. I don't need that gift. Yeah, so this is a gift. So the question is, will you receive that gift of Jesus yeah, Christ? Of course I would. Will you? Well, are you, are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah. Well, the, well if it's all you have to do is call. I have family Christians, so if you're not, I believe in Jesus. You, know you believe? That's wonderful. It's all you have to do, though, is call out upon the Son of God, ask him to wash away your sins. The one who died on the cross, who rose from the dead, he'll wash them all clean and he'll give you a new start. Turn from your sins, turn from all the things that you're perhaps doing, all, all of the, I don't know what you're doing, any sins, but turn from it and turn to Christ. Stop trusting in yourself and trust in Christ. That's the great message. Blake, I'm so grateful you stopped today. I'm going on and I'll stop and stay for a bit. Yeah, Blake, can I ask you a question? At school, do they tell you there's such a thing as God these days? Yeah, the teachers do. But it, it's crazy, isn't it? Most scientists, most science lessons we go into, we're told we came from primordial slime over millions and millions of years, and that's where we came from. Now, I don't know about you, but Blackburn, these streets are pretty clean, but imagine there's a little bit of slime in front of me right now, okay? And I do this right now. I stamp on that slime, okay? Right. Have I done anything wrong there by standing on that slime? Will I get arrested for standing on that slime? No. But if, I, if you lie down and I stamp on you, will I get arrested? 
I'll get in trouble, won't I? Yeah, I'd get in trouble for doing that. Why? Because you've got value. You've got meaning. So if you're an atheist going by, anyone listening to me right now, and you believe we came from primordial slime over millions of years, here's my question to you. At what point did you gain value? Because if the slime's not valuable, but Blake is, when did we get value? The Bible says that every single one of us is wired up with an eternal soul. But it also says the soul that sins shall surely die. And the Bible says there is a second death where all those who have turned away from God, all those who've trusted in themselves, all of them will go to hell and they will burn there for all of eternity. I don't want that for you. That's why I'm standing out here really nervous. My friend before, he was spat on before. He was called a white B-A-S-T-A-R-D before. Yeah, you don't have to say it. He was called that today in Blackburn. That's the welcoming we've got today. And he was scared. We're scared it when we're doing this. But we're here to tell you that God loves you. And there's something so much more important. Jesus loves you to pieces. No matter where you're from, no matter what your background is, what your status is in life, whether you're rich or poor, Jesus loves you. No matter who you are and what you've done, Jesus Christ is here to meet you today. Do you know God is the God of second chances? Not just second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances. Is all you have to do is turn to him. This man here is shaking his head. I'd like to ask you, what do you think of what I'm saying, my friend? You don't believe in this what, sorry? You don't believe, what, why is it you don't believe in it, sir? You tell, speak up so we can all... Right, okay, you believe God's a way of control. Why'd you say that, sir? I, I don't believe that, sir. No, God gives his freedom. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life abundance. To be honest, I think there's more people who are controlled in the world. You know, I'm not gonna, I, I don't know, what's your name, sorry, I'm Joe. Stephen, I don't know what you're like, Stephen, but I know many young men, sadly, they're controlled by something called P and in an N, P-R-N, okay? They're controlled by that. And I, if I, and I can challenge many men and say, right, I challenge you to not watch P-R-N for a full, for a full month. Can they do it? Yeah, I've done that already. What about a year? Can no, you do it? No, no, no. no, most men can't, can they? I think that's control. And the Bible says that we're actually controlled by something called sin. But Jesus said, the, if the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. And Jesus Christ can set you free from your sins. I know it's a bit embarrassing for me to say this, but honestly, if I look at you right now, I'm free from that sin. I used to be bound by it, but I don't watch it anymore because Jesus Christ has set me free. Something else, I used to smoke you know what, okay, a lot. And I could not give it up. It doesn't matter what happened. Whenever there was a party on, I'd always be there. I always, but I wanted to quit. As soon as I met the risen Lord Jesus, he took it away. Are you against all that shit? What do you mean? Well, I don't think it's the best thing to do. I think it messes up your mind. And even today, I've got paranoia because I used to do it so much when I was a young man. The free to, if people are free to do whatever they want, well, let's open the prisons then. Let's let all the prisoners out and let them do what they want. Yeah. Do you think that's right? But what about those who have? What about a man who's murdered another man? Should he be let out of prison? He shouldn't, that's it. People shouldn't be free to do whatever they want. We should have boundaries and that's what the Ten Commandments are there. To a point, yeah, exactly. But I'm saying something like that, that I used to smoke, it made me paranoid, it messed up my mind. But I'm saying Jesus can give you hope. People paranoid. Mate, I, why do you smoke it, my friend? I smoke it every day. Yeah, you're happy, okay? He wakes and bakes that man, okay? Well, he looks like a happy man. But I'm saying Jesus, that isn't the main thing I'm here to tell you about. I'm not here to tell you about waking and baking and all these things. I'm here to tell you that God loves you and he'll turn your life upside down and he'll give you eternal life. Here's something that's not a fairy tale, your sin. That's not a fairy tale, that's not a myth. Because the Ten Commandments reveal to us. It's a bit like, have you ever been to a foreign country before and you've seen cockroaches, okay? You turn, you, you turn up in the middle of the night and there's all these cockroaches. As soon as you put the light on, what happens to those cockroaches? They scatter for the darkness. And that's the same with the Lord Jesus Christ. When you turn the light on, people turn away. They don't want to think about God. But I'm telling you, come to him. One day you'll meet him. Whether you want to meet him today, uh, well, you can meet him today. But whether you meet him tomorrow, all of us will meet him one day. And you better know that you've got a hope beyond the grave with the Lord Jesus Christ who died on a cross. There is only one way to heaven through him. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And if you deny him, if you demote him as that, that will be a sin that you'll 
be, you will have to pay also when you, when you stand before him. Consider these things. God bless you all. It's wonderful to be in Blackburn today. And please consider what we said. Thank you, Blake. You're a good friend. Thanks for listening the whole time, my friend. Yeah.